Hot Springs National Park is located in central Arkansas and is one of the only national parks in this part of the country. The land here was actually set aside for the federal government to preserve in 1832. Over the years, a city sprung up around the famous hot springs that are prevalent in the area, and it became a loved place for illegal gambling and mobsters, as well as baseball spring training. The park is more a preservation of its unique history than it is a natural area to explore, but there are still fun places to hike and fun adventures to have around hot springs. I spent the entire day there in the spring of 2022, and here's how I explored Hot Springs National Park. Be sure to let me know what I left off in the comments. Hey everybody, today we're in Arkansas at Hot Springs National Park and we're going to explore the entire park in one day. I started my morning in Hot Springs walking the downtown area and looking for an open coffee shop. Eventually I found an open place called Collective which ended up being a great way to start your day in the city. I grabbed a coffee and a breakfast sandwich and just people watched for a little bit before continuing on. Alright, now that we got our coffee fixed, time to start exploring the park. If you want a full breakfast instead of just coffee, check out the pancake shop. Heading back towards Bathhouse Row, I made my way to one of the most popular spots in the park. Here you can see the hot water slowly cascading down from the hill above you to the pool that's right along the walkway. It's one of the best ways to see the hot springs while you're in the park. You can't actually get into the water here, and there's only a few ways to experience the water and all of them are paid. Be sure to actually go up here as well as it gives you a good view down onto the spring. This path to the right of the cascade leads to two viewing platforms or you can continue on to the trail that goes along the Grand Promenade. After exploring the spring, we're heading out on the Grand Promenade Trail. Here's the official start of the trail right across from the Arlington Hotel. This trail basically goes along the backside of Bathhouse Row from above, so it's about a half mile to the end, then a half mile back on Bathhouse Row if you want. I think I took the shortcut. I think the Grand Promenade actually starts down there, a little bit further than where I started. But we're definitely on it now. This trail is only about a half mile long and it goes behind the bathhouses on a brick path. So we're right above the spring that we were at, down there. But it's cool to see it from above. Plus, over here, it's like coming right out of the mountain. If you stay the night in one of the hotels, this is a great path to do early in the morning as the cool air really lets the steam come through. Plus, there were a lot fewer people here at this time and so I got to have the trail pretty much to myself. As I was walking past the overlook, I saw the light rays going through the steam so I went down to see it. It was a pretty incredible place for photography as the light rays really came through in the early morning. Those clips with the light coming off the smoke of the hot springs were incredible. That was so cool to see. So here's where we're walking and then that's Bathhouse Row right there. Just right off the main trail again, there's more hot water running down. crazy that you can just feel the heat. You don't even have to touch it, just coming off with all of this steam. Plus this water is rushing a lot more than I would have thought. I think these springs up here are more decorative now than they are in actual use, but at one point in time I'm sure they probably fed the many different bathhouses. These springs are accessed off the Tufa Terrace Trail, which is a small break off the Grand Promenade. According to the website, the Grand Promenade is wheelchair accessible. It really is a great walk in the park for the entire family. We've made it to the end of the Grand Promenade Trail. We are right here. So now we're gonna connect with the bathhouse row and we're gonna walk up there. Right after you finish the trail, right here you can fill up your water with hot springs water if you want. 
I talked to some people who said the entire reason they come to this area is to fill up a bunch of jugs of water to take home. They believe that the water has healing properties. Note that this water is really hot though, if you touch it. I didn't get a chance to try it here as I didn't have anything to hold it in, but I do try it later in the video. Right by the National Park Service building, there's a plaque on the first ranger that was murdered in the line of duty in a national park. His name was James Alexander Carey and he was killed by bootleggers in 1927. Bathhouse Row is a fascinating area to be included in the national park and is great for those that are interested in history. The Lamar Bathhouse is the official national park store. It's not open yet, so we'll have to come back and check it out later. A few of the bathhouses here were built in the late 1800s and the longest continuously operated bathhouse has been running since 1912. If you're looking to get a massage, this place has been running for over 100 years and they still do it the old school way. I'm not doing it, but let me know how it is in the comments. There are two bathhouses you can still experience on the row. Buckstaff, which focuses more on the historic experience, and Quapaw, which is supposedly more modern. I didn't experience either because my hotel actually piped in the hot springs water as well, so I get to experience that later in the video. Our next stop brought us to the Fordyce Bathhouse, which is the visitor center for the national park. It's easily something that you cannot miss when you're visiting the national park. The bathhouse opened in 1915 and is over 28,000 square feet. While it went out of business in the early 1960s, it was restored in 1989. It's now an amazing example of what these historic bathhouses would have looked like in their heyday. It's surprising to see how big this museum truly is and it takes a good 45 minutes to an hour to walk through it all. Here's a photo of people actually in this room. This skylight here has 8,000 pieces of glass and is supposed to be Neptune's daughter, mermaids, dolphin, and fish in the swirling water. You can also talk with the park rangers here and get recommendations on what else to do in the national park. A few of my favorite parts of the museum were the gym, the second floor waiting area, and seeing all of the crazy tools that were top of the line technology back in the day. Again, plan for about an hour to spend here or even longer if you're really into the history. You guys, look at how crazy this old elevator is. Be sure to ride it when you're here. First floor. So most of the bathhouses have chairs like this and you can just sit and relax. There's always people sitting and looking out whenever I'm walking down here. That visitor center and museum is awesome. You have to do it. Now we're heading up to West Mountain. There are two mountains, one on each side of Bathhouse Row, West Mountain and North Mountain. Most everything is on North Mountain that the average person does, but I wanted to at least drive up to the top of West Mountain to see what there was to see. About three quarters of the way up, there's a pullout on the right hand side that gives you good views of North Mountain and the tower and down towards the city. Once you make it to the actual summit, there's a decent sized parking area, but there's not really any views. The best views are definitely from the pullout before the summit, but there is a hiking trail that's 13 miles and goes around the entire ridge line of the park. The ranger told me that the sunset trail is nice for like foliage, but that there's not a lot of great views on it. We're not gonna do it today, but do let me know about this one in the comments as well. Heading on to the next spot. From West Mountain, it was about a 10 minute drive back down to Bathhouse Row. If you're looking for a free place to park while you're here, be sure to find this spot. This is where you can park for free. Most of the other spots in the area charge $5 an hour or $20 for the day. That's why it's nice to go to that spot. We're back in downtown on Bathhouse Road to go to Superior Bathhouse for lunch and the Gangster Museum. By this time of the day, everything was open again and we can explore some of the spots we missed. On the location where we're standing, there was a shootout in 1884 that left three people dead right in front of the sweet shop. This is our next order of business, the Gangster Museum. Just finished the tour, they didn't allow any photos or videos. You go around in different rooms, watch a video, learn about some of the gangsters. Overall, a little pricey for what it is, but if you like the history, you'll probably like it. On the way to Superior Bathhouse, I stopped at Maurice Bathhouse. 
This is another historic spot that unfortunately doesn't have anything inside of it anymore. They just have a few pictures in the windows and then around the back there's a spring you can see. Superior Bathhouse is another unique spot that you have to see while you're in the National Park. This bathhouse is a brewery and is the only brewery that's inside of a U.S. national park. It's also the only brewery in the world that utilizes hot spring thermal water as their main ingredient. The place is just cool and it gets really busy so be sure to note that you're probably going to wait. I love to explore the property, see the way they converted some of the historic rooms, or just go outside and hang out in the beautiful patio. They make 18 different beers here and they actually have a flight that allows you to try all of them. Since I was here by myself, I just tried the four most popular and it was a great place to get a drink. I was honestly surprised by how good Thermal Hot Springs beer could be. There's also lots of food options, basically the typical brewery type food like french fries and sandwiches and burgers. If you can't get into Superior Bathhouse or you just want something a little more low-key, check out Bailey's. This small fast food place on the outskirts of the town has been here for a long time and makes crazy good burgers and crazy good milkshakes. Check it out, my peanut butter milkshake has actual peanut butter in it. And it is incredible too. Just a classic American burger spot. What more could you want? Cheers. Anyways, back to Bathhouse Row, we headed over to Lamar Bathhouse, which is the official store for the National Park. If you want to try the thermal water, you can get a cup or you can buy a bottle and then you can actually fill it up right here. It was a lot of fun to try the water here and it was also nice that it wasn't as hot as the fountain that's outside. The store also has some fun items like bathrobes. I didn't get a chance to visit the store earlier so I went back, I get a magnet, I always get a magnet from every national park that I go to, now we're going hiking. Before heading up to North Mountain, I decided to check into my hotel, the Arlington Hotel. This historic hotel has been in the city since 1875, but this specific version of the building has only been here since 1924 after a fire. It's a fantastic hotel that everyone from Babe Ruth to Joe DiMaggio has stayed at. There are many different room types and a couple of them actually come with hot water from the hot springs piped into the room. This is my hotel, it's the historic Arlington Hotel, but the best part about it is that it has mineral water that comes out of the bathtub from the hot springs. So you can take a mineral water bath in your hotel. Water from this faucet flows directly from the natural hot spring for which Hot Springs, Arkansas is famous. Why go to the bathhouse when you can just do it at your hotel? You can barely see it, but there's also a pretty cool view down towards Bath House Row. After checking into the hotel, I headed out to explore some baseball history before going to North Mountain. Hot Springs National Park has over 100 years of baseball history, and Whittington Park is one of the best places to experience it. Along the outskirts of the park, they have lots of different signs on players and people who are influential in baseball and hot springs. So this area is now a parking lot but if you're into baseball history, more baseball was played on this corner than anywhere else in Hot Springs. It's a pretty famous spot and they even have the home plate right there that you can see. According to the local story, Babe Ruth hit a home run from right here all the way into the alligator farm that's down there, over 500 feet. There's lots of information online if you want to experience more baseball history here, but this is about as much as I saw. Here's the plaque that shows the Hot Springs Baseball Hall of Fame. Lots of famous people on there. Man, this is the most famous sign. It's the one for Babe Ruth. And here's the story that I told you already about hitting it into the alligator farm. I know I said we were going hiking, but a local told me to check this place out. It's been here since 1902. Let's go see the alligators. Multiple locals told me I had to visit the Alligator Park and that it was as historic as it comes in Hot Springs. There was also a bunch of crazy stories I heard from different people, such as that they used to sell alligators you could actually take home in the 1950s. Not sure why anyone would want to buy a live alligator to take home, but I'm glad they don't do that anymore. 
There's another sign for Babe Ruth and where he hit the ball in. This place was a little eclectic, but there were certainly a lot of alligators all around the area. Most of them seemed to be sleeping in the sun, but you could learn a lot about them with the different plaques they had and there was multiple people walking around to answer questions. You could also pay to feed the baby alligators if you wanted to do that as well. That was a pretty crazy spot. I've never fed an alligator before. They were telling me where they rescued them from. Pretty cool, probably fun if you have a family. Now we're heading up to North Mountain, do some stuff up there. Heading out to North Mountain, we started the three and a half mile Hot Springs Mountain Scenic Loop. This is a beautiful and shaded drive, but you could actually hike to the top if you wanted to do that. Eventually you'll see the pagoda and lookout come into view and then you'll turn to the left and head up to Hot Springs Mountain Tower. This is actually the third tower that stands here today with the first dating back to 1885. This tower was built in 1983 and stands at 216 feet tall. This is our next stop in the park, Hot Springs Mountain Tower. After paying the fee, you'll gain access to the elevator which will take you all the way to the top. When I was there on a weekday in the spring, there was no one else riding the elevator with me and basically only a couple people at the top. The elevator has windows on one side and tells you about the history of the area as you make your way up. Eventually you'll be let off on the bottom of two floors, and this floor is the museum floor with great views out the windows. It's completely enclosed and the floor above it is not enclosed. The museum was great as it had lots of area history and baseball history you could read about. After soaking in the views and the history, you can head up to the top level in the open air observation deck. So that's the first area down there in a window, but you can actually go outside as well. Definitely get much better views out here without having to go through the glass. Whoa. It's basically a 360 degree view up here, seeing in all directions and you can see pretty far. There's the Arlington Hotel and mine is actually that one right there on the corner of my room. Uh, that's Bathhouse Row right there in between the trees. I'd love to stay up here for sunset, but this area actually closes about an hour and a half before sunset. So unfortunately, we gotta head back down and we're gonna do a hike. After riding the elevator back down, there is a shop at the base if you wanna pick up any souvenirs. If you don't want to go up in the tower, you can actually get a pretty decent view from this pagoda right here as well. This pagoda was built in 1910 and it was originally supposed to be used for a fountain. Unfortunately, they weren't able to pull the water out, so it just became a lookout that's been used for decades. Alright, now we're heading on to the hiking trail that goes to Goat Rock. It's about a mile and a half round trip, I think. Continuing on the scenic drive, you'll eventually reach the North Mountain Loop. This is another short one-way loop that has a few stopping areas for hiking trails and lookouts. We've made it to our last stop of the day. We're heading out to Goat Rock. So we got about 200 feet of elevation down and 1.5 miles round trip. Heading out on the trail. This says watch for ticks, so I guess watch for ticks as well. I tried to find a place for sunset, but the tower closes early. The west side doesn't have any great views. This one actually looks out towards sunrise, but if you know of a sunset spot, please let me know in the comments. The trail's easy on the way down, but a little bit more difficult on the way back up. This trail takes a really roundabout way to get down to Goat Rock. It's very long switchbacks that are very gradual. So it's nice for a whole family probably. Plus it's pretty with all the green and the shade. We don't see a lot of this in Southern California. Getting some nice views out towards the distance and we are almost to Goat Rock.
Here's the split, and we are heading up to the Go Rock viewpoint, which is right there, I guess. Eventually, you'll reach some stone steps on the right that'll take you up to the rock and the lookout. According to all trails, this is the number one trail in Hot Springs National Park. It is a nice little viewpoint, but you're not that high up, and the views from the tower were definitely a lot better. It's a little bench you can sit and relax at here as well. Not a bad little view to end our time in Hot Springs National Park. Hike like this in another national park probably wouldn't make the list, but in a park like this, which focuses more on the history than it does the hiking, it's not a bad spot to end the day. I'm heading back to the hotel for a mineral bath. That's the end of this video, and we will see you on the next one.